Hey everyone, my name is Vedenin, and in this video we're going to take a look at a new model by Nanonets that converts images into Markdown. This model is called Nanonest OCR Small and it is a visual language model, a fine tune of Quen 2.5 VLM that is more focused towards understanding documents. The main focus and key features and capabilities of these models are latex equation recognition, image descriptions, signature detection, watermark extraction, smart checkbox handling, and complex table extraction. Me in particular, I'm very interested into this last point since most of the other three models are pretty inaccurate when we're talking about table extraction. So let's see how this model compares to the rest of them. If you want to become a better AI engineer, go and subscribe to MLXFert Pro. There you can find a complete AI bootcamp that starts with foundation such as understanding Python, statistical models, classical machine learning, then you're going to go through complete deployment of a classical machine learning pipeline and then you're going to dive into generative AI, how to write prompts, how to select your models, then you're going to go through RAX, CAX and building complete AI agentic applications. Along with the bootcamp there are now more than eight different projects that you can download and run on your local machine. So if you want to become a better AI engineer, go and subscribe to MXTR Pro. Thank you. The weights for the Nanonet OCR S model are available on Hugin Face. And here you can double check that this is indeed a fine tune of Quen 2.5 VO model, the 3 billion parameter model. And you can find a more detailed instructions on how to run this model. We're going to be using the transformers library in order to run the model in a Google Club notebook and show you the different examples that we're going to go through. The Nanonets company is also providing this open source library called DocX and they state that this is actually an on-premises OCR free unstructured data extraction markdown conversion and benchmarking toolkit. They also provide the IDP leaderboard which is essentially a leaderboard on how visual language models are uh, performing on data extraction from documents. And uh, here you can see that they are now integrating this Nanonets OCRS model within their library. And you can use the library itself if you want to get a bit of a better integration of data extraction. This is something very similar to Doclink. So in the future, I would be very interested in comparison between the different available libraries for data extraction from documents. I am in my Google Club notebook and this notebook can be found within the GitHub repository that I'm going to link down into the description of this video. You can see that I'm using an NVIDIA L4 GPU. This can run on slower and smaller GPUs, but for my testing, I wanted to see how well does this perform using Flash Attention 2. Uh, of course, you can go through some of the other GPUs and probably run the same model without any issues. So the first thing that I'm doing here is to download a couple of, of documents that I'm going to be using for the testing itself. Those are going to be pure images and I'm going to be installing the latest version of the Transformers library, Flash Attention, since we're going to be loading the model itself using uh, the Flash Attention 2 implementation and the rich library in order to get a better look at the resulting markdowns. Then to load the model itself, I'm going to be specifying the string of the model. This is pretty much taken from the Hugging Face uh, readme file of the model. I using a D type of auto. This will most probably load the model into 14.16 and it's going to be using the GPU since we're going to be adding a flash attention to implementation. Then we're going to put the model into evaluation mode and load the tokenizer and the processor, which is going to be taking essentially the images and converting them into sequences that will be passed into the visual language model. This is pretty standard for pretty much every visual language model within the Transformers library by Hungry Face. Uh, here I saw this uh, warning and it says that it is using a slow image processor. 
Uh, what this means is that uh, probably the processor is not written in Rust. I'm not really sure if this is something related to Quen 2.5 VL or this particular fine tuning, but in any case, everything should be working as expected. And probably if the guides from Nanonets are doing some improvements, this can be further fixed and we're going to be able to use a fast image processor. Then I took a look at the model itself. And uh, since this is a fine tune of Quen 2.5 VL, you can see that the architecture of the model itself is pretty much unchanged. And I just wanted to make sure that this model doesn't have anything on top of the original model, which appears to be the case uh, in uh, at least for this model. Then I'm going to be using their helper function, which essentially is taking the image path for the document that we're going to be analyzing at the model, the processor, and then how much new tokens do we want to output. This model is actually taking a prompt such as uh, this one. And again, this is pretty much the default prompt that the library authors provide. What this prompt is telling is that uh, it wants the model to act as an OCR. Essentially, it instructs the model of how the formatting of the table must be returned, how the equations must be returned, and if you have images and captions for those, how to interpret the images themselves and the captions. And uh, pretty much all of that information is provided along with the image from the image path to a list of messages with a very simple system prompt, your helpful assistant, the image path, and then the prompt right here. Then we're going to be using a chat template that is going to be added to the processor thanks to the authors. We're going to be processing the text, the image, and uh, we want this to be returned as tensor for PyTorch. And we're going to be putting the inputs or the pre-processing result into the device that the model is on. In our case, this is going to be the GPU. And then we're going to be calling model.generate with the maximum new tokens. Note here that I'm not specifying a temperature or pretty much any of the other available parameters. And I'm going to be running essentially with the default ones. Uh, then we're going to be generating IDs and thanks to the processor, we're going to be able to convert those token IDs into the final output text that we're going to be uh, adding or returning to the user. We're going to be skipping the special tokens since we don't want those to be included in the final result and cleanup tokenization spaces again is going to be set to true. So at the end, we're going to be uh, receiving just a string. In our case, uh, this is going to be mostly markdown formatted string. Okay, so uh, here is the first uh, NVIDIA first page. I'm going to show you what this actually contains. And uh, this is the image here on the left. It is from the NVIDIA announcement for financial results for first quarter of 2026. Uh, you can see that this is a very nicely formatted PDF with uh, pretty much only digital text and it contains a table at the end. So uh, given this document, you can see that uh, roughly it took a one minute on this GPU to convert it into a markdown. Uh, and uh, note that this actually took a bit longer compared to the other examples, since probably the model had to load some of the information within the GPU memory. And uh, this is the resulting output. Uh, you can see that this looks pretty good. It is very nicely formatted. Uh, you can see that the model has replaced the logo of the image with this. And I'm using the rich library to format this into a nicely uh, presented markdown. Uh, another thing that I did was to uh, give us this comparison. On the left here, we'll have the document image and on the right, you're going to be seeing the output from the model. So the first thing that I've seen here and what was I pretty much very impressed with this model is that uh, the results are pretty good for a 3 billion parameter model. Uh, note that again, this runs on a single GPU with roughly 20 gigabytes of VRAM. And uh, so far, I'm again, pretty impressed with the quality. Note that this is a visual language model. There is no actual OCR here. 
despite the name of the model. And uh, you can note some of the things here. Uh, for example, uh, one mistake that I found is that our breakthrough block well AI supercomputer, the model set A supercomputer. And here within the OCR, you can see that this is actually AI, AI supercomputer. Uh, so this is one mistake that I found within the text. Probably there are uh, some more, but again, for 3 billion parameter models, this is uh, pretty good. Most of the dates and most of the numbers are actually collect correctly, uh, correctly extracted. And uh, if you go through the table, you see that this year over year right here within the heading is actually added to the uh, front part of the table or the master heading, if you will. And here it is actually extracted incorrectly. But uh, putting this aside, you can pretty much check all of the other cells within that table and you're going to be seeing that pretty much all of the other results are correct. For the next table, we have pretty much the same mistake. But after that, uh, all of the numbers here are appearing to be uh, correctly extracted. Again, very amazing for a 3 billion parameter model. I would hope that if the guys are actually providing a larger version of the model, they're going to be opening it as well. The next thing that I decided to do is to take another page from the same document. And uh, here you can see that this is actually an inner page of the same document, as I've already told you. And this one contains a bit more complex table. Uh, you can see here that there are other headers here, uh, a bit more formatting for the table, and then some text at the end. So. On the right, you can see the extraction itself. At this time, this took roughly 33 seconds. Of course, on this page, we had a completely a smaller amount of text. So this might be also be the case why the prediction was quite a bit faster. But if you go through the numbers here, you can also see that there is actually a very nice extraction of these results and total current assets etc the table is pretty nicely formatted again uh, you can go through the numbers for yourself using the notebook and check the results for your own of course an automated evaluation for those types of models will probably also be a great starting point especially if you have custom documents on which you want to test this so uh, after the table itself you can see here the text NVIDIA Corporation condensed consolidated statements of cash flows in millions and audited three months ended. So again, pretty much a pretty good, good extraction for 3 billion parameter model. Okay, so I decided to change the document itself and I have passed this receipt. This receipt took about 20 seconds to extract on the same GPU. And at the first glance, this seems to be uh, extracted very nicely with the unit. Uh, Puaza, this is the address here, the date. Let me check if this is correct. This appears to be correct. The time, uh, pretty much everything looks correct. Uh, but if you go through the table, you can note that the junior Arab meal was not extracted at all. You can see here the cheesy hash brown bytes were extracted but the wine or the wine item with the junior wrap meal is missing, which is quite a big uh, mistake from the model. Uh, but other than that, I can uh, pretty much see that uh, the other fields are pretty nicely extracted. Uh, here you can see the TID number. It is missing the stars in front of that. Another mistake, which uh, might be costly when you're extracting some information from the documents. And uh, then it said at the end that it, it contains a QR code. So the image description worked out correctly in this format. So pretty good, but I would expect to not miss this wine. I'm not really sure what happened under the hood. And it is pretty uh, hard to tell why those models are making those mistakes. But in this case, it looks like this is not included into the wine items. 
So the worst one was inspired by the information within their blog post that they're looking and working through watermarks. So I took this sample uh, ID or uh, document with a lot of watermarks and just wanted to see what the extraction for this model is going to be at. And uh, you can see here the watermarks account creation at ACMEC Corporation and then specimen here on this diagonal. So if you go through the extraction and uh, you're going to see something like an European Union passport photo of a person with short hair wearing a white shirt. Uh, why did it say just a person but not a female or a woman? I'm not really sure about that. It might be some sort of censoring. So it got the name of specimen here, which is correct, with the prenoms of Jan, Jean, okay. Then it got the uh, sex of F, which is again correct, nationality, Luxembourg, uh, okay, the date, date of birth, 18, no, sorry, 1983. And then I, it actually described the logo right here, but I'm not really sure why it didn't extract the watermarks. Pretty much none of the uh, watermarks were actually extracted here. It says ACME Corporation creation at ACME Corp. It might be the case that the markdown is converted into some tags are removed and uh, probably this output is not exactly the raw output. In this video, we've seen the Nanonet's OCR small model, which appears to be performing quite well, especially for a 3 billion parameter model. Also, this model is a fine tune of Quen 2.5 visual language model. Hopefully, the guys from Quen are going to be releasing a version 3 of the visual language model, and the fine tunes on top of that are going to be providing even better results. Of course, uh, it remains to be seen how those types of models are going to be handling the hallucinations that they inevitably do, which appears to be a very large problem within those models, but time will tell. Thank you for watching, guys. Please like, share, and subscribe. Also, join the Discord channel that I'm going to link down into the description of this video. Go and subscribe to MLX for Pro to become a better AI engineer today. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.